Well, praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made for us. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Oliver. And again, I am excited to come and share the word of God with you. So let's go ahead and pray and uh, get into our lesson this morning. Father, we're so grateful and we're thankful to you for the privilege as well as the opportunity that we get to share the word of God. Father, I thank you for your peace, your power, and your presence being brought to bear upon me as well as the viewing audience. I pray that you would think through my mind, that you would speak through my vocal cords. I pray that it be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise the Lord again. I am uh, excited to come and share the word with you again. It's always exciting to share the word and just allow the spirit of God to, uh, to use me as well as to minister to you. So we're going to continue what we started on last week. And uh, <clears throat> I started teaching on uh, from the subject of developing a kingdom mentality, developing a kingdom mentality. Now, today uh, I'm going to subtitle this teaching operating in God's system, operating in God's system. Amen. So we're going to begin uh, this morning with Luke chapter 17, uh, verse 20 and 21. Luke chapter 17, verses 20 and 21. <clears throat> From the King James Version. All right, here we go. And when he, that is Jesus, demanded, was demanded rather of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come. He answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Verse 21, neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. Now, so we're talking about developing a kingdom mentality. And as you can see, the Pharisees demanded of Jesus when the kingdom of God uh, should come. And of course, uh, as we understand the kingdom of God, then um, we know that the kingdom of God, listen, does not come with observation. Uh, no one would be able to say low here or low there. But the kingdom of God, Jesus said that it is within you. Now, of course, I'm sure that this dumbfounded them. They didn't understand what he meant by the kingdom of God is within you. Um, <clears throat> so um, we, we are looking at uh, the impact, I believe, that the God rather intended that the kingdom of God should have upon our lives, our lives rather. So let's look also uh, at Romans chapter number 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Look at this. For the kingdom of God is not. Now, notice he is telling us what the kingdom of God is not. Evidently, uh, these people were thinking that the kingdom was, okay, uh, a physical um, place or something that was visible that they could feel or touch or what have you. But notice Jesus said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace and joy 
in the Holy Ghost. Now, we're going to come back to this righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. But what I wanted you to see is, is that the kingdom of God is not. And then we see that what the kingdom of God is, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, so what I want to do, I want to begin <clears throat> um, by talking about the kingdom of God so that we can establish some things and move into operating in the system, operating rather in God's system. The kingdom of God is the sovereign rule of God. Did you get that? It is the sovereign rule of God. Now, what does it mean? What does sovereign mean? Sovereign means one that exercises supreme uh, authority. One who exercised supreme authority. So the kingdom of God, first of all, is the sovereign rule of God. Secondly, the kingdom of God is the system of God. Thirdly, the kingdom of God is the government of God. The kingdom of God is the rule of God. The kingdom of God is the dominion of God. The kingdom of God is the authority of God. The kingdom of God is the reality of God. It is literally, listen at this, the kingdom of God is literally God's system of operation or the way that he does things. Now, I, I want to preface this and I want to, uh, again rather, it is literally God's system of operation or the way he that is God does things okay so now we see that the kingdom of God is within us now that's powerful in and of itself it is within us okay so God wants us to live listen at this God wants us to live with a kingdom mentality now Whatever God's, God wants of us or expects of us, then we need to know that um, this is something that we can do. It's doable. Uh, as difficult as it may seem to some, we can develop a kingdom mentality. Yes, it's going to take or require rather some discipline. It's going to require some time, you know, things that we have to do uh, in order to engage ourselves, uh, you know, to to get this development process started, but we can develop a kingdom mentality or, as I mentioned on last week, a kingdom mindset. OK. All right. <clears throat> now. The kingdom, first of all, is a spiritual kingdom established in the hearts and the lives of believers. The kingdom is a spiritual kingdom established in the hearts and the lives of believers. Now, so one of the things that I want to reemphasize and may want to may say something a little different than I did last week or rather, rather add more to it. And that is <clears throat> the kingdom of God implies a king and it also implies citizens. Amen. Of the kingdom. Now. It's important that we realize who can be citizens of the kingdom. Now, let's look, if you will, at Colossians chapter one. Uh, verse number 13, I believe it is. Who can be citizen of the kingdom? Because, again, just know anyone, you know, can <clears throat> can be a citizen of the kingdom because it requires something of us. Now, look at this. Let's look at verse 12. Giving thanks unto the father, which hath made us meet or able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13, who hath delivered us, notice 
the tense, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. The New Living Translation says the kingdom of darkness. Okay? Who have delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, watch this, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. So now notice that, <clears throat> that God has delivered us. The word delivered there means to rescue. Hallelujah. God rescued us from the kingdom of darkness. And he translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay. So now, who, are, who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about becoming a citizen of the kingdom. All right. We don't have to turn there. Uh, the Bible says in John 1 and 12, to as many as received him. To them gave he the right to become sons of God. So have you received him? Have you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? Because, again, I'm talking about citizenship. Then the scripture says, no man can come unto the Father. Jesus said this, no man can come unto the Father except by me. <clears throat> Amen. He said in one place, he said, I am the door. So, so in order to get to God, we have to go through Jesus. And that is we must make Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives. Amen. So that's how one become a citizen, by receiving Jesus Christ as Lord over their lives lives. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> so we see the kingdom of darkness and we see the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you, uh, but for those of us who've been rescued out of the kingdom of darkness, I praise God for that. Amen. Um, uh, even more so, you know, on this side, as opposed to, you know, looking back at the kingdom of darkness and the stuff that's going on you know, and taking place and to think that I was a part of that at one time. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah for rescuing me out of the kingdom of darkness and translating me into the kingdom of his dear son. All right. <clears throat> now. So now the kingdom of God. When we look at Jesus, Jesus came. Listen now to establish and he came to expand his kingdom on the earth. Notice now he came to establish and he came to expand his kingdom on the earth. Now, the expanding of his kingdom um, is to continue with you and I. In other words, expanding or to populate his kingdom. You know, every time someone give their life to the Lord, uh, you know, of course, uh, you know, them doing so is a result of someone else that's already born again. You know, the Bible says that we have been uh, it has been committed unto us the ministry of reconciliation. And so, <clears throat> you know, we are, uh, you know, that those of us who are born again, those of us who have made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives as we witness, as we tell others about Christ. Amen. Guess what's happening? And they make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. The kingdom of heaven is being populated. It's, it is expanding, as it were. Amen. But now, the, the heart of what I really want to get into uh, uh, this morning with you is how now, you know, now that I'm a citizen, now that I'm in the kingdom, how am I to operate? How am I to function in the kingdom? So let's look, if you will, at uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48 from the message translation. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48 from the message translation. Now that I'm a citizen, amen, how am I to operate in this kingdom? Notice something here. In a word, what I'm saying is grow up. Well, God wants us to grow up. Your kingdom subjects. OK, the words <clears throat> subject there can be translated your kingdom citizens. Now live like it. Notice he said now live like it. Amen. So it's one thing for uh, us to receive and to make Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives and become citizens of the kingdom. But now we are told, listen, we are told now live like it. 
So we're talking about our behavior, our conversation, the way we carry ourselves, the things we do. He's saying now live like it. Amen. Live like kingdom citizens. Notice he said, live out your God-created identity. Live generously. Listen to how he's telling us to live now. Live generously. We're talking about even here. Thank you for that, Holy Ghost. Even right here, <clears throat> we're seeing how we are to operate in God's kingdom. Notice he said, live out your God-created identity. Live generously, graciously towards others. The way God lives towards you. So we see here now, now that we are in the kingdom, or the kingdom rather is within us, we are citizens of the kingdom. Now we're told to live like it. Amen. So we are talking about operating in God's system. Uh, if you... <clears throat> uh, uh, Listen to Elder Margaret on Tuesday. You know, she's teaching now on um, in the world, but not of the world. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> very good teaching because a lot of it flows in line with what I'm teaching. And a lot of what she is teaching flows in line with what I'm teaching. Um, but she's teaching on uh, in the world, but not of the world. Amen. And I encourage you uh, on this Tuesday to uh, to uh, to look at uh, to rather listen to part two uh, at six thirty of, of that message. All right. <clears throat> so now we are told to live like kingdom citizens. Amen. Uh, one of the things that I recall Elder Margaret talking about was uh, we have dual citizenship. In other words, you know, we are in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God is in us, but also we are still in this world. Amen. And so being in this world, there is a behavior. There is a way that we are expected, you know, to act. Amen. Or, or, or a way that we are expected to walk and to carry ourselves. Amen. Because we're still in this world. Amen. We're in it, but we're not of it. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Did you know that there is no shortage in the kingdom of God? There, there's not there's, there's no shortage in the kingdom of God. Amen. Did you know that there are no hopeless situations in the kingdom of God? And 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 notice now I'm saying shortage, uh, you know, uh, there is no hopeless uh, hopelessness in the kingdom of God. There are no uh, situation uh, that the kingdom of God cannot cover or does not cover and take care of. I mean, and the list goes on and on. But these are the things that exist in the natural, this natural physical realm that we live in. But when we operate, listen, when we operate in God's system, then we're able to deal with hopeless situations. We're able to deal with, uh, you know, uh, what did I say? Hopeless situations. Uh, we're able to deal with uh, uh, shortage, <laughs> uh, you know, and things of that nature. <clears throat> so it's, it's important that we learn how to operate in the kingdom of God's system. And it's not difficult, child of God. It really is not difficult. Maybe, you know, from the onset, you know, when you look at it and, you know, all the things that may be required, it may be a bit intimidating. But when you get into it and you get to reading and studying God's word, you know, and, and doing God's word, being a hearer of the word and not just a, a, a means rather being a doer of the word and not just a hearer only. Then, you know, I believe that things progressively, it gets easier and easier. Amen. But there are always going to be a challenge. Uh, you know, that that is going to be imposed on us when it comes to doing the word of God. But I want to operate in the kingdom of God system. Now, when I talk about system, <clears throat> when I talk about system, what am I talking about? The world's system. The world system, uh, and of course, uh, again, Elder Margaret mentioned this on um, uh, Tuesday night, 
is referring to a orderly arrangement. It's talking about an orderly arrangement, the way things are set up, the way things are carried out. Amen. That's the way the world's system operates. And of course, it runs counter to it runs against, for the most part, the system of the kingdom of God's system. Amen. Because in the world system, fear is one of Satan's weapons or tactics that he used to intimidate or try to intimidate the people of God. When the scripture says God have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. In fact, the Bible says in first John that fear has torment. Amen. So so we don't want to give way or we don't want to yield to or give in to fear. Amen. Hallelujah. So so there is a way for us to operate in the kingdom of God's system. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. Now, uh, let's turn, if you will. To. Matthew chapter number six, Matthew chapter number six, and we're going to read, I believe it is verse 24. Yes. Okay. No man can serve two masters. <laughs> you know what? No man can serve two masters, but also in conjunction with that, you can't operate, listen, in both of these kingdoms. You're going to either operate in one or you're going to operate in the other. It's, you know, and that's 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 a no brainer. I mean, you, you can't operate in both kingdoms. Uh, but notice it said no man can serve two masters for either. He will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought. For your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. For is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Now, notice he said, don't take no thought. In other words, he's saying for, to us, don't worry about. See, God wants to, resume, wants to assume responsibility for us. You know, the Bible talks about we are not our own. We've been bought with a price. You know, God wants to assume responsibility for us. It's just a matter of us trusting ourselves to God because God, listen, God knows how to take care of us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So notice he said, don't take no thought for your life. It's, he's not saying that your life is not important. He's just saying, don't take no thought. Because, see, this is the way the world operates. But God is showing us how to operate. Listen, we're talking about operating in God's system. He's showing us how to operate in his system. And the way we operate in his system is we don't take no thought for our life. What we shall eat, what we shall drink, what we shall uh, nor yet for our body, what we shall put on. It is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air. They sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Verse 27. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit Unto his life, I mean, <laughs> to his statue. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you? Watch this now. O ye of little faith. Little faith. Therefore take no thought for. Therefore take no thought saying. Take no thought saying. 
what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be, be clothed? Notice he said, don't, that you don't take a thought until you say it. In other words, when the devil brings a thought to our mind, you know, a, a, a thought of sickness, a thought of fear, or what have you, the way you take that thought is, is you say it. When you speak fear out of your mouth, you have taken that thought. When you speak things out of your mouth that's contrary to the word of God, you have taken that thought. Are you understanding what I'm saying? See, I, I remember the time when I got a hold to that. My eyes were open to that reality. You know, just because a thought comes to our mind doesn't mean, listen, doesn't mean that I have to say it or verbalize it. Because once I verbalize it, once I say it, that's when I have taken that thought. Amen. So he says, don't take no thought saying, what shall I eat or what shall I drink or wherewithal shall I be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. See, so what is he saying to us? This is the way the world It's The world seeks after all these things. Amen. Because the world have resume, have assume responsibility for themselves. They, they, they don't they, they, they don't have God to depend on like we do. We, you know, God is not their source like he is our source. So notice it said, you know, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now watch this. For your heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. And these are just a few of the things he he knows that we have what we have need of overall. He knows our needs. He knows our wants. He knows our desires. Amen. Next verse. But seek ye first. See, so what we are to do is we are to seek first. In other words, we are to make it a priority. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things. All these things. What things? All the things that the world seeks after. All the things that, you know, that the world rely upon. All these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34. Take down for no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So that verse 33, go back to verse 33. And let me see this in the Amplified. Now, notice what this verse is saying here now. But seek, aim at, and strive after first of all his kingdom and his righteousness. His way of doing and being right. His way of doing things. Seek, listen, his way of doing things and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given to you and besides. So notice he said we are to seek his way of doing. This should be a priority for us, child of God. We should seek first the king. Let's see this in the uh, message translation. I remember reading this in the message translation. <clears throat> Steep your life in God's reality, God's initiative, God's provision. Don't worry about missing out. You'll find all your everyday human concerns will be met. All of your, you'll find your everyday human concerns will be met. Notice he said, says, steep your life in God's reality, God's initiative, God's provision. See, this should be our focus. Amen. Because anything other than God's initiative in God's uh, provisions, God's reality, anything other than that, listen, we will, we will revert to just as the Gentile, just as the world does. So this takes effort. This takes uh, making a decision to seek first the kingdom of God and God's way of doing things. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right. If we want to live successful in the world today, then we must become efficient at working the system of God's kingdom. There is no true success apart from God's system. See, 
there are a lot of things that appear that have the look of success, but there is no true success apart from God's system. So child of God, you, you, you need to get that because as a believer, you need to understand that no matter what it looks like, you know, uh, you know, we see how the world is prospering. Uh, we see how the world is getting along, but uh, it's a lot that you don't see. Okay. And because you don't see those things, then what you do see is so appealing uh, uh, to you. But notice I'm saying here that there is no true success apart from God's system. There is no true success in marriage apart from God's system. There is no true success in finances apart from God's system. There is no true success uh, where material things are concerned uh, apart from God's system. So, I mean, listen, God is not just concerned about, you know, uh, spiritual things for us. He's concerned about, uh, you know, things that we want and we desire uh, in the here and now. But we what we need to do is or we need to be mindful of is that we don't allow these things to get in our heart. <coughs> Amen. Because we don't want it to usurp the place that's due unto God. All right, let's go on. You can't operate outside of God's kingdom and expect to receive God's best. Let's look, if you will, at Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Notice I said you can't operate outside of God's kingdom and expect to receive God's best. I don't know about you, but I want to experience God's best. Amen. Now, it may take a little longer. Amen. But be as it may. I want to experience God's best. I, I just don't want, you know, hand me down. I don't want, you know, something that, you know, someone else have had. I want to experience God's best. That's what I'm going for. That's what I'm shooting for. Amen. God's best. All right. Notice this. <clears throat> and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years. And had suffered many things of many physicians. Notice now, <clears throat> notice what I said. The statement that I made, I, I said, you can't operate outside of God's kingdom and expect to receive God's best. Notice, and have suffered many things of many physicians. Meaning, obviously, that she had gone to these physicians and, um, and uh, you know, things didn't work out or she had gone to these uh, physicians and spent all of her money or what have you and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, wonder what would have happened if from the onset she had heard of Jesus. <laughs> huh? Then she wouldn't have spent all her money. Amen. Uh, and all the things that she suffered and went through, uh, she, she wouldn't have to go through those things. But notice behind, on the other side of all those things, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Notice she said, she said something. And straightway, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Verse 30. <clears throat> and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue or power had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude throng in thee and saith thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. Last verse, verse 33. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Excuse me, verse 34. And he said unto her, Daughter, <clears throat> thy faith have made thee whole. Thy faith, not my faith, not my power. She made a demand, a place of demand on the power by touching him. But he said, thy faith have made, your faith have made you whole. See, one of the things about, uh, one of the ways, rather, 
of operating in the kingdom. There are a lot of things that our faith, listen, will enable us to produce. Amen. Just simply by what we say and what we believe or, or as faith is, you know, believing something and saying something. But notice here, he said, thy faith have made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Your faith have made you whole. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so we see that in verse 26, you know, uh, how she, before she came to Jesus, the Bible said that she spent all she had and nothing uh, uh, grew better, but rather grew worse. All right. To live successfully, you, you have to operate <clears throat> in God's way of doing things or working his system. Now, notice I said uh, to live successfully. Now, success or being successful is not, is not, is not just talking about money. Amen. I mentioned this on last week. Money is included, but it encompasses uh, other things where relationships are concerned. Amen. Where, where our, uh, you know, our health is concerned. Hallelujah. <clears throat> and, and the list goes on and on, but this is what success is. Now, now, as far as the world is concerned, the world system, again, their success is all about what I can get. Amen. That's, that's their idea of success. All right, let's go on. <clears throat> Jesus is teaching his disciples to switch systems uh, and uh, to do it the kingdom of God's way that shows how they add things to themselves. So we saw that, you know, when he talked about or he was talking to the disciples about, you know, switching system, you know, making the kingdom of God their priority or making it a priority. Amen. <clears throat> we are the ones determining whether or not things are added to us. You don't add things to yourself by trying to serve God and money. See, again, you, you know, um, we have to be very mindful of the distractions that are in the world today. Amen. And again, they come through one of three sources, the world, the flesh or the devil. But we have to be mindful, you know, of these things because they are distractions. They are things that uh, they have an, a, uh, what it called, uh, an appealing distraction. They, they have the appearance that, you know, it pulls us away from the things that we really need to be giving time and attention to. Amen. And, uh, and that's one of the things when it comes to seeking first the kingdom of God. That is something that we all must do as believers. Amen. So that there are things that God wants to add. You get that? He wants to add to us. In the kingdom of God, you can increase... <clears throat> with no struggles. The world system is a struggling system. <laughs> Amen. It, it's, it's a get all you can, can all you get. I mean, it's a fight for the, you know, the finish. I mean, that's the way the world system operates. Amen. You can't bring the world system or will operate into the kingdom of God and live successful. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, uh, I want to, us to look at Luke chapter 10. Verse nine and 10, because, again, we're talking about operating uh, in God's system. <clears throat> and and of course, you know, child of God, there are many ways in the scripture uh, that that we see that we are to we can operate in God's system, you know, and all the things that I'm talking to you about today. You know, yes, it runs counter to the world because to the world, this stuff doesn't make sense. It, it just doesn't make sense. Well, I mean, what's the use? But to us, this is the way that we are to live. Amen. In operating <clears throat> in God's system. Notice here the scripture says, and heal the sick that, that, are, that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God is nigh unto thee. Verse 10. But into Whosoever sit, whatsoever rather, city you enter and they receive you not, go your way out of the street, out into the street uh, of the same and say. 
even the very dust of your city, which cleave on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be, listen, notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Go back to verse 9. Heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Heal the sick. So when the sick are healed, whether hands are laid upon them or they are, uh, you know, prayed for and healing, you know, comes. Listen, the Bible says, the scripture here says, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. One translator said the kingdom of God has come upon you. Amen. Because now what is it saying? It's talking about God's system and God's way of doing things have come upon you. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. All right. <clears throat> we have to work the system of God and uh, work the, the kingdom of the kingdom system. And the kingdom is going to enable us to complete our assignment. You know, when the, you know, we talk about uh, the scripture talks about how that, you know, God has uh, given each of us a purpose and he has a plan for our lives. Well, it's working the system It's working the kingdom of God's system that will enable us to complete our assignment. Amen. Because we cannot operate in this natural realm. Amen. Now, operating in this natural realm also encompass, you know, um, you know, um, um, physical things, you know, whereas operating in the kingdom of God's system, you know, we, we operate or we are admonished to operate in faith. The Bible says, you know, the just shall live by faith or we walk by faith and not by sight. See, without faith, we will not and cannot operate in what well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, operate in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Now. A kingdom mentality, a kingdom mentality encompasses one, ha one rather has to change how they live and behave. Turn to Matthew chapter five. Well, we already looked at Matthew 5, 48. Uh, the kingdom of, I mean, having a kingdom mindset encompasses changing uh, where we put our focus. Let's look at Colossians chapter two, verse three. Well, I'm talking now about changing our mentality, changing our mindset. And these are things that, you know, that we can do. And these are things that that we must do, rather, in order to change um, our mentality or mindset. Colossians chapter two, verse three, change where we put our focus. Ah, uh, in whom, let's go to verse 2. Verse 1. No, is it 3? I said 3, Pete, didn't I? <laughs> 3 and 2. Yes. Notice what the scripture here says. Set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Set your affection. The word, the script, script here, affection, means set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. Why? Because things on the earth are temporal. They are subject to change, as the scripture says. So he's saying set your mind on things above and not on things on the earth. So in order to change our mentality, we have to change our focus where we are focusing our attention. Amen. We need to be mindful of setting our mind on things above and not on things of the earth. Uh, another uh, area of change is changing how we make decisions. Uh, Proverbs three, five and six from the message translation, changing how we make decisions. When we operate, when you operate um, in the system of God, you change how you make decisions. Amen. Uh, and when I say change, how 
you know, prior to coming into the knowledge or the saving knowledge of Jesus, uh, our uh, method or uh, way that we operated when we made decision was if it felt good, then we did it. You know, uh, if the majority of was doing it, then we would do it. No, listen, <clears throat> notice what this verse says. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. See, the world, the, now again, this is totally off the cuff when it comes to the world. We, you know, we're looked at as being spooky or weird. But notice the scripture here says, listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, he's the one who will keep you on track. Who? God is the one that keeps us on track. Amen. Now, let's, let's flip this uh, in the King James Version, verse 5. <clears throat> Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all your ways. When it comes to making decisions, amen, when it comes to doing things, you know, acknowledge him. You know, and I believe that we, we can develop the habit of acknowledging God. You know, God, I, I want to know what, how you feel about it. What do you think about this? Should I do this or should I not? You know, and, and trust him, you know, to lead and guide us to make the right decisions. But notice it said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he, that is God, shall direct thy path. That's a promise to us that God will direct our path, okay? All right. Change the way we treat others. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 from the message translation. See, all of these things, you know, encompass, you know, us operating in the system of God, and they run counter, they run counter, rather, to the way the world operates. Notice what this says. I'm challenging, uh, I, I'm challenging that I'm telling you to love your enemies. Let them bring out the best in you. Now that doesn't make sense from a natural standpoint. How can your enemies bring out the best in you? Okay? Not the worst. When someone gives you a hard time, respond uh, with the energy of prayer. Go, let's, next verse. For then, you are, for then you are working out of your true self. Your God created self. This is what God does. He gives his best, the sun to the, the, sun to the warm and the rain to, to nourish to everyone. Regard, regardless, the good and the bad, the nice and the nasty. Notice the scripture here says, for then you are working out your true self, your true self or your true identity, the way that God created you to be. You're operating under God's system because this is the way that he is admonishing us to handle our enemies, to allow them to bring out the best in us. Usually, you know, when we don't understand what's going on, they usually bring out the worst in us. Amen. All right. <clears throat> now. We don't have to force these ways of thinking. Why? Because it comes as we listen to the Holy Spirit and allow him to guide us. And I want to mention this in closing. I, I, I came across this, um, something from John Maxwell. And it's, I'm not going into details, but here he says, when you change your thinking, and that's what, we are aiming to do. We, we, we want to, you know, if we're going to develop ourselves, if we're going to operate in God's system, we, got, we're going, we must change our thinking. When you change your thinking, you change your beliefs. So your beliefs can't change until you change your thinking. When you change your beliefs, you, are change, you change rather your expectation. When you change your expectation, you change your attitude. When you change your behavior, you change your performance. And when you change your performance, watch this, 
you change your life. Amen. So in order for us to, <clears throat> to make any difference where developing ourselves or operating in, the, uh, in God's system is concerned, there has to be a change in the way we think. As the scripture says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And I believe that it runs full circle or it comes back to that which we feed upon day in and day out. Amen. <clears throat> and we want to make God's word a priority. Amen. In other words, of what we feed upon in our lives. Amen. All right. Well, my time is up and I thank you for yours. Hallelujah. As always, I never want to close out uh, a ministry time without uh, giving uh, you uh, giving those uh, the viewing audience and audience an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ <clears throat> in their life as their Lord and Savior. I don't know, you know, uh, where you are right now, uh, you know, whether you're born again, not born again or in between or what have you. Uh, but <clears throat> if you are not born again, then I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you because, again, uh, this first and foremost, will enable or allow you to become a kingdom citizen. Amen. And then not only that, but then all the things that I've talked about, um, then you have the opportunity to walk in these things. You have the opportunity to develop yourself in these things. And so that being said, if you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, <clears throat> I want to pray with you. Uh, just confess after me. Amen. And mean what you're, what you're confessing. And the scripture says, you shall be saved. Here we go. Dear God, I ask you now to come into my life. I confess with my mouth, Jesus as Lord. I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And right now, by faith, I receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. Amen. Did you mean that? No, did you mean that? Well, if you, if you meant what you just confessed, welcome to the family. You are now a kingdom citizen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, before we close, I also want to uh, give those of you an opportunity to sow. Um, this is a time that, you know, um, as far as where newness of life and the membership is concerned, you know what you need to do concerning the tithes and the offering. However, <clears throat> for others uh, who are not a part of, of newness of life, then um, I'm uh, admonishing you. If the spirit of God has put it upon your heart to give, then, um, you know, to obey the spirit of God. Amen. Now, if you are going to give, I want to encourage you to visit our website. Uh, if you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, uh, you can visit our website. That is www.nloc-outreach.com. And you can access the tab, Now What? Uh, also, uh, if you want to give the same address, uh, www.nloc-outreach.com and uh, access the tab give online and you have three different one of three different ways to give uh, it's made easy it's secure it is a secure website amen thank you hallelujah for your giving uh, into newness of life i want to encourage you uh, again on uh, tuesday night uh, at 6 30 uh, to watch the broadcast um, with elder margaret teaching on in the world but not of the world will bless your life Amen. That being said, remember, you can walk in a new quality. Of life.